my last question to you is this. Um, I've always pushed stock investment uh, to my viewers. I started investing roughly 10 years ago and it completely changed my life. Like if I didn't really learn, you know, if I didn't start reading books by Warren Buffett and learn how money works and learn how if you're not investing your money, you're, you're, you'll never actually become wealthy over time. You know, I really pushed that and I, I've gotten thousands of people to start investing for the first time just from me putting that information out there. For all the people that are watching right now who've never invested in stocks before, as someone that went to the heights and then, you know, had to go to prison for it and then start a whole new business and so forth. And you look back on your life for someone who's just starting out investing, what would you tell them to invest in? It's really simple. Just buy a Vanguard, no load S and P 500 and hold it and don't ever sell it. There you go. And the more money you have, just keep reinvesting and reinvest the dividends. And over time you'll do okay. Which is really my whole 401k. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's sad to say, but like at the end of the day, unless you're a professional investor that's on it every second, then like you just really know what you're doing. It's just, it's been proven. Even that most successful hedge fund managers can't beat the S&P over the long term. And especially when you're including the fees they charge, the commissions, uh, the tax advantages of buying and holding and reinvesting dividends. So you're going to end up much, much better off and it's been mathematically proven. You simply buy the S&P and just hold it for 30 years. Yeah. And I tell people that, but it doesn't sound sexy enough. Well, that's it's the not problem. Sexy... I'm writing a book about that right now. And it's it's that's yeah. the conundrum, right? That That's the best advice I can give you. But I know you're not going to follow it. So I also teach you how to at least navigate these other worlds without getting slaughtered. Okay. So I'm writing a book about that very thing right now. Yeah, no, I mean, you're exactly right because there's nothing cool to tell someone that you just bought some more S&P 500. It's a shame. <laughs> from it's an really index. a shame, right? You know, because that's the best investment, but people won't do it. It is. It is because the S&P 500, I mean, the, an index fund is essentially the 500 biggest companies in America. And since it's an index fund, there's no fee because it's just a computer that just kind of recalculates every day. So the fee is like 0.001%. Um, like you said, most people don't beat the S&P 500 consistently, even the big dogs out there. Even the Warren Buffetts of the world don't always beat the S&P. You, know? well, you can't do what and, Warren Buffett does. He gets different deals. He buys, gets preferred stock deals. He right. buys, you know, stakes in companies at, 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 you know, in much better valuations than we're allowed to. But also Warren Buffett will tell you to buy the S&P. He'll tell you that's the best investment. He'll he'll tell you that. Yeah. And, you know, by reading his book, it, it really transformed, you know, how I look at it. And I mean, all my 401k is in S&P and all my actual stock portfolio is in companies that I actually use every day that I'm closely connected to. And I only have like three or four stocks at any given time because I don't have expertise in, in everything else. I don't know about biotech. I, I don't know about car companies, not as intricately as I know a company like Google that I use their product every day. Sure. And my company is built on YouTube and I understand the, you know, when the company is doing well, when it's not doing well. But yeah, the S&P 500 is really the best investment overall. And you're rarely going to beat it consistently over a 10 or 20 year uh, time span. And it's got dividends that you could reinvest and you're sheltered from any sort of big movement from any particular company because you own 500 companies. Right. So I'm actually glad that you said that, especially from someone like yourself that had made billions over time. So what do you have coming up next? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I do a lot. I do a lot of venture capital. I'm very much involved in the metaverse, uh, in crypto and in non-crypto deals as well. I mean, I, I'm really always looking for great companies that I can help with my brand, uh, with my guidance, and if they need money, with money as well. Uh, I'm doing a crypto mastermind at my house uh, on April 9th and 10th. It's pretty much sold out. Um, but it's like, you know, people who are in crypto that really want to learn how to, you know, have access to, to early stage deals. I and mean, it's crypto and, and all these deals is very, very important to get involved early um, and to also not to get involved with bad players. You, ha you have to know it's, it's, it's very easy to make money in crypto right now if you have access to early stage deals and you know that the players behind these deals are legitimate. Those are the two most important things is who is behind the deal? Who is running the show? Are they legitimate? Are they have to have success by them? And also, you know, obviously what is the idea is matters as well as the utility, but far more important is the people. If the people are solid and their idea is stupid. They'll pivot to a new idea and they'll make it work. 
And you know, you if you get involved in those deals very early, then you're more often than not going to do really, really well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you know, along with those great deals, will become some. You know, there's some bubbles along the way that everyone's going to no lose doubt. their shirt on. You know what I'm saying? Just like everything else, just like there was a dot com bubble and a bunch of the companies fell off forever, but then Amazon and Google and you know they're the, still going yeah, strong. The one important thing though, because you're right. And someone said this exact thing yesterday. I was on a panel. And I, but the one thing you have to remember is that before the bubble burst, fortunes were made on companies that went to zero because you got in early and took the ride. I always say you want to get in at the end of the beginning and get out at the beginning of the end. You don't want to try to get in the bottom or the top. Now, very often I get in at the bottom because I have access to amazing deals and people come to me with early stage deals. But for the average person, you just, you know, you, you, it's very difficult to find something early. Try to get in right at the beginning, at the beginning of the end, end of the beginning and get out at the beginning of the end. Your know, bulls make money, bears make money and pigs get slaughtered. Right. And unfortunately, try to time the market, any market. Is extremely difficult. Very, difficult. which is why, which is why, for me, I've always found that to be too hard. I'd rather just buy a company like Google and just never sell it. Couldn't, I couldn't to me, agree to me, more. that's easier. I couldn't agree more. Except if you are doing, if you're in the venture capital business, that's just a different, different business, yeah. right? And then you yeah. have to realize that you're going to have some huge wins, some major losses, and you better make sure the big wins are really big because they have to offset the losses as well. Right. But that only applies to people like yourself who actually has the money for venture capital. For most people that are watching this. Yeah. For people who have 10, 20, 50,000, even $100,000 in their bank account, you do not want to do venture capital. (laughs) Buy the (laughs) SP. That's what it is. Oh, man. Jordan Belfort, man. Definitely an honor to sit down with you. Uh, You know, like. Like a lot of other people, I was introduced to you by Wolf of Wall Street. But I think what's so dope about your story is that really the whole, you know, stock market part of your story did not define your entire story. The fact that you were able to get out of prison, a convicted felon, a reputation associated with what you did and start a brand new business that's completely different in a totally different genre and become very successful at it. To me, that's the most impar- you know, impressive part of your story. So thank you so much for sure, sharing. Sure, my pleasure. And I think that's what people need to look at because a lot of people make mistakes and not usually as big as mine, but they always, in their own life, they feel really big and they're really, you know, they're almost debilitating to people unless you're willing to, you know, take a deep breath and realize that it's never too late. And that's the, the lesson of my life more than anything. I love it. I live it. I love it. Jordan Belford, until next time. Peace. Thanks, buddy. Take care. No doubt.